We're obviously living through unprecedented times. At this time of day, on a sunny day, this park would normally be teeming with people. The roads around it would be, would be busy. We're seeing enormous changes from coronavirus going on in this country. The government has abandoned its uh, ideas of a balanced budget. It's uh, gone deeply into deficit. It's borrowing and spending enormous amounts of money. People are working from home in a way they've never done before en masse. The NBN is being tested. We've seen dole queues of young people who've been thrown out of their gig economy and casual jobs of the kind that we haven't seen since the soup kitchen lines of the Great Depression. What is it that might permanently change out of this crisis? One thing clearly is the huge amount of debt that Australia will be in whenever this finishes. How are we going to repay that? Um, and who's going to be called upon to repay it? Well, clearly those 30 year olds who've lost their jobs are not going to be able to. We've been offshoring for a long time, relying on free trade to bring the goods into us. But now we're worried that we won't have enough surgical masks and gowns and gloves. We're retooling gin distilleries to make hand sanitizer. Do we start protecting our industries again after decades of reducing tariffs to try to produce certain essential goods that, would, that we can maintain onshore? That would be an enormous difference to come out of this crisis. Uh, what happens to international relations? Does China, uh, who seems so far to be surviving and handling this, uh, this crisis significantly better than the United States, does that change the, the, the nature of power on, in our global system? Um, do we accept, for example, surveillance uh, on our phones? If we've accepted it once to, uh, to, to track our movements if we're self-isolating from coronavirus, do we accept it more broadly for something like uh, notions of national security? These kinds of things are enormous changes that we're accepting. It's happening in, in double quick time. All this raises the question, how many of these changes will be permanent and how many will go away as soon as the crisis is over? And uh, some of the historians and the economists that I've spoken to think that we might see broad ranging ramifications out of this that last for many years to come.